It is my pleasure to welcome you to Temple Law School's 118th commencement. To begin our ceremony, I ask that you stay standing as our second year law student, Nolene Ermson, leads us in the national anthem. Thank you, Nolene. That was absolutely beautiful. And I guess we have to consider becoming a school of law and music. Commencement is always a very special moment. And Temple Law School is tremendously fortunate to have an extraordinary group of graduates graduating today. Congratulations to the Temple Law School class of 2018. Yeah. Graduates, this is a day for celebrating all that you have achieved in law school and all that you will achieve in your legal careers. In a few short minutes, your lives will be forever changed. You will no longer be Temple Law students. You will be Temple Law alumni, soon to be licensed lawyers, and our newest colleagues in this vital profession. As reluctant as we are to see you go, you are becoming Temple lawyers at a crucial time, a time when the world needs your skills, your passion, and your commitment to the rule of law. I often think that it is no accident the Temple Law School is located in Philadelphia. In many ways, Temple grew out of the ideals that were inspired and nurtured in this city. Philadelphia, the birthplace of America, the home of the Constitution, and the starting place for our democracy. A new government grounded in principles of equality. Temple Law School, at a university founded by Russell Conwell's vision for a people's university, one not for elites, but for all, one that values people not for what they were born into, but for who they are and what they can become, one that develops our students' commitment to bettering not only themselves, but society. Our democracy and our pursuit of equality has not always been perfect. But what binds these goals and Temple Law School together is that we are both relentless in our drive to make things better. We have purpose, vision, and determination. We'll do what it takes 
to get us, us closer to the ideals that define and drive us. And that, with apologies to Nick Foles, is the real Philly special. I think about these ideals each morning when I pass the bust of Lincoln that graces our law school's entrance. Many of you will have noticed that this is a bust of a younger Lincoln, a pre-presidential Lincoln. It is titled Lincoln the Lawyer. I can think of no better example than Abraham Lincoln of how lawyers working in the service of a more perfect union bear a unique responsibility for ensuring that the heart of our democracy continues to beat with moral courage, a zeal for justice, and mercy for all who need it. I say all this because I know that these attributes also define and inspire you. I've had the great benefit to get to know you, this class, as both a teacher and dean. Your class has bought, brought energy, curiosity, diligence, and insightfulness to our school and the work we do. As a class, we have noticed that you have been particularly committed to staying in difficult conversations. You have been leaders who listened with a steadfast commitment to understanding one another better, even when it was very difficult. Hold on to that commitment. It is vitally necessary in our profession. I speak for the entire school when I say that it has been our genuine privilege to get to teach you and to know you, and that we thank you for choosing Temple Law for your legal education. We are honored that you are now and forever will be a part of the Temple Law School family. I want to applaud the achievements of one particular group of graduates at this time, our Rubin Public Interest Fellows. At Temple, we work hard to instill in our students a pro bono ethic that sets our profession apart from others. Those who, who demonstrate exceptional dedication to public service earn membership in the Rubin Public Interest Law Honor Society. It is my honor to tell you that in this JD class, 82 students, about 40% of the class, achieved this honor. Together, they performed more than 15,000 hours of pro bono work during law school. If you include the time that these Rubin students spent working for public interest organizations, government agencies, the judiciary, and in clinics and practicums, these students have spent a staggering 48,679 hours in service during their law school careers. With the graduates who have earned membership in the Rubin Public Interest Law Honor Society, please rise. Thank you for your outstanding contribution to our community and the profession. I want to recognize another outstanding group of individuals, Temple Law School's faculty. Our faculty represents the best in legal education, dedicated teachers and expert scholars devoted to our community and to society. Although I have the privilege of speaking to you today, it is our faculty here on stage who have enabled your Temple Law School education and experience. I feel very fortunate every day to work with such exceptional colleagues. Would our faculty please rise and would everybody join me in thanking them. <laughs> Let me also take a particular moment to thank Temple University's Executive Vice President and Provost and former law school dean, Joanne Epps.
this is in some ways, I think, both a happy and sad moment for her. This is the last class uh, where every student in the class started at Temple while she was dean. And we want to thank you, Professor Provost Epps, for your leadership and for joining us here today. I know that you would also like to take a moment to thank and acknowledge those family and friends whose support and sacrifices bring you to this afternoon. The truth is that almost no one makes it through law school alone. And for many of you, the companions who helped you on this journey are here today. These are people who encouraged you when you had doubts, supported you when you were weary, cheered your successes, and whose belief in you has carried you to this day. With the parents, the in-laws, and grandparents of the graduates, please rise and be thanked. <laughs> Being a law student is hard. Being a spouse or partner of a law student might be even harder. Would the spouses and significant others of our graduates please rise and be thanked. <laughs> Support comes from many quarters. With the children, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, and other relatives and friends of our graduates, please rise and be thanked. I want to commend each of our graduates for choosing a career in law. With your degree, you gain entry into a profession that touches almost every aspect of our lives. With that privilege, you have earned the responsibility of helping to administer justice in our society. There are many ways to serve the cause of justice, and it will be up to you to identify and pursue yours. We know that you have what it takes. You are now Temple Lawyers. Make no mistake, the practice of law is challenging. Mastering legal doctrine is hard. Dealing with time pressure, client pressure, and adversarial pressure is taxing. The most important thing that lawyers do, representing another's interests, is weighty and difficult. If there were simple solutions, clients would not need our help. But in my view, the challenge of law is part of what makes it great. But so are you. Know that by virtue of your presence here today, you have the knowledge, skills, and experience to be successful. And not just successful, but exceptional lawyers. Being a lawyer is a gift for which we should all be grateful. We get to engage in a profession that is intellectually stimulating, pushes our skills to the limits, opens up leadership possibilities, and enables us to make others' lives better. Take advantage of this challenge. Use your temple education to imagine a better world and then lead us into it. Finally, as my grandfather once said, Everybody should be part of a group that is larger than a family and smaller than a nation. You are now and forever will be a part of the Temple Law community. We are proud to have you in our group and hope that you will keep a part of Temple in your soul. We look forward to watching you as you turn your dreams into successes. You are the graduating class of Temple University Beasley School of Law. You are Temple made and we are Temple proud from all of us, congratulations, Temple Law School class of 2018.
It is now my great joy to present to you the students chosen by their classmates to be the class speakers. For the evening division, it is my pleasure to introduce Elliot Griffin. Elliot is a two-time owl, having received her undergraduate degree from Temple, where she was the VP of External Affairs for Student Government. She made her mark in the law school as well. She has earned the Trial Advocacy Certificate in addition to her JD, and Elliot will be working at Ballard Spar after graduation. Well over a century ago, Russell Conwell founded this institution as a night school. With little financial resources, an empty basement in his church, and an abiding belief in the power of education, Russell Conwell decided to make an investment that would impact generations, an investment in all of us. He envisioned Temple as a place where working people, no matter their means or station in life, could strive to make something of themselves. Conwell was starting what would become an international community, representing people from all walks of life, all united by the temple motto of perseverance conquers. So as Dean Mandel said, I attended temple as an undergraduate student. And I returned to attend the Beasley School of Law because of the temple family. The temple family might have started with Russell Conwell, but its ideals have been carried forward by people whose mission and tactics were not always understood. But like Conwell, their love of people and community was always at the forefront. As Temple's latest class of night owls, we carry their legacy and vision. Since we began this journey four years ago, some classmates found their soulmates got engaged or married, others purchased homes, a few found some furry best friends, and starting right before our first class, when one of our classmates became a father for the first time, some, we have seen some families grow and multiply by a lot. To all of the people who stood by us throughout this time, thank you. Loving a law student, especially one that works full time and doesn't get home until well after the sun goes down, is a challenge to say the least. Thank you for dealing with our random outburst of tears, the impatience and unexpected mood swings that result from four years of sleep deprivation mixed with a little overcaffeination. To my fellow classmates, I hope that you are able to reflect on our individual and collective journey and recognize that while law school plays a part of our story, we have accomplished so much beyond that. As classmates, we have become a family to one another. And like a family does, I'd like to brag about a few of my classmates who are representative of the best that Temple has to offer. Included among our evening owls are veterans who have shown us unmatched determination and ability. You have provided a perspective that we didn't know we needed and pushed us all to work so much harder. Thank you for your service to our country and our class. Also included among our evening owls are parents who have shown us sacrifice and determination. We've watched you say goodnight to your babies via FaceTime because class goes so much later than bedtimes. Your sacrifice will one day be an inspiration to your little ones. Our evening owls include those who have come to America and may call the U.S. a second home. You have demonstrated that no obstacle is too big to overcome. With a full course load and a full-time job, time and time again you rise above the national rhetoric which attempts to devalue your worth simply because of where you're from. As people and as Temple Owls, you have the right to work hard and reap the benefits of every seed that you have sown. And finally, among our evening owls are friends fighting for a fair justice system. You show us that we can in fact protect victims while also providing compassion and solution for those whom society has left with nothing but their bootstraps. We look forward to seeing how you will shape our city and our country in the future. While our evening owls reflect a rich diversity of experiences, as of today, we are united because we are now temple-made lawyers. 
And as Dean Mandel said earlier, with great power and opportunity comes great responsibility. Just as we cared for each other over the last four years, we listened to understand, treated each other with respect, learned from one another, and came together as evening owls, so becomes our responsibility to the world. Our responsibility includes disrupting traditional establishments which tend to overlook the accomplishments and qualifications of folks who look like me. Our responsibility means using your privilege and skill set to stand up for people who have fallen victim to a society which too often polices skin colors before communities. And our responsibility includes creating opportunity for others. And like Russell Conwell, that might mean taking a few dollars and a church basement and transforming an institution into one that will impact generations. My charge to you today is to take your responsibility seriously. Treat others with the same steadfast support, respect, and love that you have given your Temple family. Don't shy away to the sideline, but stand up for the people and causes which connect to your heart. Thank you all so much for allowing me to speak today. Whether it was stressing over finals or fiercely competing in Quizzo, I have enjoyed every moment with all of you. Thank you all for supporting me and each other like family. I wish you all the power, grace, and unwavering confidence you need to pursue your passions and change the world. Congratulations. Thank you. Got one more thing before I leave. <laughs> Dean Mandel, it is now my honor to present you with this gift from the class of 2018. This donation of over $3,100 is our effort as a group to support the law school's future and to express our appreciation as students. Nearly 70% of the graduating class has contributed to this gift, which the faculty will match. It is our intention that these funds go to support one incoming day student and one incoming evening student with financial need. This gift is in honor of Professor James Trezella, who served as an educator, mentor, and inspiration to so many of us. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot both for those beautiful words and for this generous donation. Thank you all from the class. It is now my pleasure to introduce Jeff Becker, who will be the speaker selected by the day division. Jeff was a, a member of our law school's moot court team. He also worked with the Scheller Center for Social Justice. Jeff will be working at Morgan Lewis next year. Thank you, Dean Mandel, and congratulations to the Temple University Beasley School of Law Class of 2018. I am honored that you, with some help from Cambridge Analytica and my Russian bot farm, elected me to be your class speaker this year. It was only three years ago that we met each other and listened to welcoming remarks from our deans and professors. They correctly predicted the friendships we would make and the lessons we would learn here. But they made one notable error. At the time, one dean declared us the class of the Pope because of the papal visit during our first semester. But events of this year changed all that. So alternatively, I'd argue that we should, and we will, forever be remembered as the class of the Super Bowl 52 champion, Philadelphia Eagles. As law students, we made a choice to walk into Klein Hall to hear lectures from our esteemed faculty who taught us to think critically and to write more effectively. Powered by coffee from the first floor cafe and free City View pizza, 
We answered relentless cold calls, voluntarily read thousands of pages of case law, and had some nerdy conversations in study groups. And we're proud of that. This hard work taught us to be solutions-based and to strive for answers in a world of complexity and uncertainty. And now we've made it. Just one 12-hour test and $800 bar fee away from being able to call ourselves Esquire. After today, more choices will lie ahead of us. How we approach them will affect both ourselves and those around us. Because what we learned here, the law, is about more than just memorization and application on exams. It is a profound and powerful tool. If used correctly, that tool is the bedrock for justice and equality. But as we all know too well, history is littered with examples of when the law was used not for good, but rather to stymie progress and harm the less fortunate. A little more than a year ago, a family of five personally experienced this clash of the law. This family, the Asalis, lived in Syria, where bombs and shelling campaigns had torn their country apart. It took years, but after much effort and following of immigration procedure, they were awarded a visa to come to the United States. So on January 27, 2017, they boarded a plane and left their home. The next morning, they arrived here at Philadelphia International, ready to start their new lives but they'd have to wait a little bit longer. You see, while their plane was in the air, a federal executive order was signed banning entrance from a list of countries that included their own. After landing, the power of the law detained the Asalis and ultimately forced them to get back on a plane and return to Syria. And then a group of lawyers chose a different path. They chose to file lawsuits, seek injunctions, and pressure lawmakers to step in. Just one week later, because of the decisions these lawyers made, the Asalis were granted approval to return to the United States and live in peace. No matter where we work, whether it's in corporate law, private practice, or for the government, all of us will face moments in our career when we too will have to choose how to wield our well-earned and powerful skills. My hope is that when we are faced with these choices, we will stay true to what we learned here at Temple and choose to do good. Because the truth is, it's up to us now. We must use the law to protect democratic institutions and ensure that everyone's opinion, no matter their politics, are expressed and not censored. We must use the law so that all people, irrespective of gender and sexual orientation, can progress in the workforce free from harassment and discouragement, and so all students can receive a quality education. And we must use the law so that every individual, regardless of race, color, or creed, can exist in public spaces without fear of persecution. We can do this. This class is made up of brilliant, caring students who wrote on law review, participated in moot court and trial court competitions, who did clinics, externships, argued real motions in court, mediated housing disputes, and ran a student government. We worked hard, and we did so with a smile. And somehow, in our very limited free time, this class also managed to become three-time champions of Dean's Cup, the most competitive inter-law school basketball competition in all of southeastern Pennsylvania. So let us go forward and continue to be proud of what we learned in those cold, windowless rooms of Klein Hall. Let's choose to be the lawyers we always wanted to be. I wish everyone good luck and much success on your future journeys. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2018. Today, I also have the privilege of presenting the George P. Williams III Memorial Award, which is given to a professor chosen by the graduating class for excellence in teaching. The winner of this year's George P. Williams Award is a dedicated and respected educator who brings real-world practice to the classroom. 
His quick wit and years of experience helped us navigate both the rules of evidence and the intricacies of criminal law and criminal procedure. Importantly, he has guided both the day division and the evening division on our way to becoming attorneys. It is my pleasure to announce that the recipient of this year's award is Professor Lou Natale. Thank you all. Love you all. Thank you, Jeff, for those wonderful remarks. During my opening remarks, I noted the rich relationship between Temple Law School and the city of Philadelphia, including the values, ideals, and commitment to people that have become hallmarks of both. Our commencement speaker today embodies these virtues as well. Sozi Pedro Tulanti, whose background is available in your program, is in many ways an American success story. His family settled in North Philadelphia in 1983 after being granted asylum as political refugees from Zaire, now the Democratic Republic of, of Congo. After graduating from Northeast High School, he earned both his undergraduate and law degrees from Harvard, and he has since built a legal career that spans both the public and private sectors. Most recently, he served as Philadelphia's city solicitor, and in that role, Mr. Tulanti exemplified many of the ideals to which we at Temple Law School ascribe, so much so that we can forgive him to not returning to North Philadelphia to earn his law degree. Among Mr. Tulanti's accomplishments as city solicitor, we're building and strengthening the child welfare unit, increasing its capacity to represent abused and neglected children, and the creation of an affirmative litigation group within the law department. For those who are unfamiliar with this term, affirmative litigation involves the pursuit of legal claims in the public interest. Under Mr. Talanti's leadership, the Philadelphia Law Department pursued affirmative litigation against major banks over discriminatory lending practices, opioid manufacturers for contributing to the crisis unfolding on Philadelphia streets, the Department of Defense for failing to report gun-related disciplinary measures that should have kept dangerous individuals from acquiring firearms, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions over his threat to withhold public safety grants due to Philadelphia's status as a so-called sanctuary city. Why have I chosen these out of Mr. Tulanti's many accomplishments to mention today? For two reasons. First, as you find your own path in pursuit of the cause of justice, I hope that you, like Mr. Tulanti, will exercise the power of the law in protection of those who are otherwise defenseless. And second, because in doing so on, be on behalf of our city, Mr. Tulanti has made manifest the very definition of democracy as articulated by President Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. On behalf of the Temple Law School community, I am grateful to Mr. Tulanti for his service and welcome him now to speak with us. Thank you, Dean Mandel, for that introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I thought this was Temple Law School. You guys are hype. Let me try that again. Good afternoon, everyone. That's a lot better. To members of the faculty, administration, graduates, your family and friends, I want to tell you how touched I am for the opportunity to speak to you today and share some thoughts with you. It is an honor for any lawyer in the city to speak at the commencement at Temple Law School because 
If you don't already know it, the term temple lawyer has special meaning in the Philadelphia legal community. It really does. Ask judges, employers, members of the bar, or anyone who practices law in this town. They will tell you that temple lawyers are the bedrock of our legal community. This is because we all know that like Jim Beasley, you will be tenacious, skilled, diligent, and dedicated to helping the downtrodden. That is the awesome and proud legacy that each of you are inheriting. But before I say another word, let me say congratulations to the class of 2018. You studied, you can clap now, I'll put it later, but clap right now. You've studied, you've outlined, you work like hell, some of you while going to school at night, others while working full time, and obviously raising families. Do you guys remember the first, the, how you felt your first day as one else? Yeah, it was crazy, right? Well, compare and contrast that to how you feel right now. Is it a lot better? Much, much better. But I want to I wanna talk about the people who you wouldn't be here without. People who supported you, pushed you, consoled you, and are here to celebrate with you. That's your family and friends. Please give them a round of applause. As you, as you heard from Dean Mandel, until recently I was a city solicitor, which is a lawyer for the city of Philadelphia. The work was no doubt impactful. I spent a lot of my time trying to make the department, the law department, a vital part of our legal community and an exciting, supportive place to be. In just two years, we hired 78 attorneys, and I haven't checked this, but I'm pretty sure we hired more Temple attorneys than any other employer over those two years. But most of what I will tell you, okay, clap there too. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's good news. But what I want to tell you today flows not just from my 17 years as an attorney, whether as a partner at a, a, in private practice, a federal prosecutor, solicitor, now law professor, but also my life story. You see, I'm a political refugee, which is a fancy way of saying I was kicked out of the country I was born in. I was born in the Congo, as Dean Mandel said, which was then called Zaire. And it was really only known as the place where Muhammad Ali beat Foreman in the rumble in the jungle. We were the jungle, apparently. Um, and even though it was one of those places that people have called, and I'm gonna quote, so-called shithole country, it was my home, right? It was a place I loved and a place my family loved. But our dictator, uh, then Mobutu Sese Seko, he didn't love us back. He arrested my father uh, because of his political views. And after a brief but brutal detention, my dad was eventually released, and, but we were still in danger. So we were desperate to find a safe haven. Of all the countries we sought out, the United States, true to its core beliefs, was the first one to offer us salvation and political asylum. We fled Zaire in the middle of the night and came to Philadelphia when I was eight years old. And like many immigrants who still come to our city today, we barely knew anyone. We didn't speak any English. We were laughably poor. We were afraid very afraid. We also had really, really bad timing. We had the misfortune of arriving to Philadelphia at the same time as crack cocaine hit Philadelphia. My father, though he spoke five languages, became a cab driver to make ends meet. I was a menace in school and I aspired to become a drug dealer. But despite these challenges, we were nourished by hope of a better life. And through hard work and luck, I slowly learned English, I'm still learning, went to college and law school, and then started my legal career. In a nutshell, that is my story. And I'm telling it to you because you, each of you, you're going to be future leaders of the city, and I want you to know that I'm not the only one. There are other women, children, and men in this city, many who still live in the shadows from different countries with different stories, who are grateful for the opportunity to live in Philadelphia and contribute to the city. Please remember that as you hear a lot of the debates over immigration. And as Temple Law graduates, there's no doubt you have all the knowledge you need to be good lawyers. What I want to offer to you now are simple lessons that I believe will make you more complete lawyers. Because I know when you leave here today, it will be easy to be sucked into the noise of regular life. Studying for the bar, getting ready to watch the royal wedding, trying to figure out what's going on with Kanye, I have no idea or throwing yourself into Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, or some other social media site. But once in a while, do me this, this, this promise. Please pause and reflect on the following lessons as you begin to mold your legal career. So the first lesson is be kind to others. 
Someone once said, quote, when I was young, I used to admire intelligent people. As I grew older, I admire kind people. That is so true. As a young lawyer, I was most impressed by people's pedigree and intelligence, who they clerk for, what law reviews they were, they were in for. And at the time, I thought that was important. Now the lawyers who move me, and some of them are in the audience today, are the ones who are generous and humane. The problem is that too many people in our profession believe that kindness is weakness, and good lawyers are gladiators who treat the practice of law like hand-to-hand -hand combat. That is nonsense. For one thing, you all know that it's not true, since each of you has surely benefited from the kindness, not just of your families, but of classmates, as you've heard, mentors, professors, or even perfect strangers. In fact, many of you are here because people extended themselves to you when you were most in need. I am no exception. When I first came to America, all I wanted to do was be like everyone else. I didn't want to stand out. I despised my name and wanted to be called Steve or Sam because I thought Sozy sounded like Susie, Sazi, Josie, and all, all the other ones. I was mortified by my accent. My childhood dream was to say water like everybody else. I would practice it, water, 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 water. And to be blunt, I was just embarrassed about being different. But one day, my favorite teacher at Russell Conwell Middle School was kind enough to tell me that there was nothing wrong with my name. Couldn't pronounce it, but there was nothing wrong with my name or my accent, and that I was stronger by accepting myself as I was, as I am, without a mask or without apology. I call it an act of grace that changed my life, even though it was too late for me because I already perfected how to say water and eagles. So as you embark on your legal careers, please summon the empathy to be kind to others, even if they don't look like you or worship with you or agree with you. You can do it in big ways, of course, through your legal skills but also in small ways, as simple as how you treat and talk to people who lack status and power. An example is the mail, per the mail room or copy person in the place you work in, or victims of crime, or persons, many of them of color, mired in a criminal justice system. Because I found in my life that the truism is actually true. When I helped other people, I always got more out of it than the other person. Again, I'm not asking you to you know, sing kumbaya and hold hands with opposing counsel at a deposition. Don't do that. It, it doesn't work. It is okay to be the hero in your own story. Who doesn't want to do that? But don't look and overlook the rejuvenating power of simple kindness. Lesson number one. You, you guys taking notes? It's lesson number one. Lesson number two is actually the symbolist. Breathe. It is no secret that our profession draws people who are talented, who work hard, and who are detail-oriented. Many of us lawyers are also very driven and perfectionists, even control freaks. We are trained to spot issues and problems and solve them like that. In fact, those are the very traits that many of us value and what helped many of you succeed in law school. But those traits also make it difficult for us to deal with any setbacks, even minor ones. As a young attorney, I would prepare detailed out outlines of uh, witness for direct examination. And when, God forbid, the examination did not go exactly according to plan, which when you start litigating, you realize it never goes according to plan, I would descend into utter existential crisis. The reason was because I lacked the tools to train myself that I was going to be okay. I needed a strategy, and I was lucky to eventually learn it. So here it is, and I recommend that each of you do this the following at least once a day. Stop. Put your phones down. That's pretty hard, but put your phones down. Get in the moment. Slowly and deeply inhale through your nostrils. Hold your breath for three seconds, then slowly exhale through your mouth. I do that in court every time I'm in court. Actually, I just did it like 10 minutes ago. You guys didn't see me. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it works. And, and I'll be real and admit it that I probably didn't take a deep breath for the first four years of my career. I was always taking a shallow breath and going from one issue to another. And others of, you, others of you in this class may be more adventurous and practice mindfulness, get a guru on retainer, walk around in yoga pants. You do you, whatever works for you. But before you do anything else, you have to learn how to breathe and be present. I know this is not the kind of nugget you usually find in a commencement address, yet this is precisely the right time for you to learn that you need to invest in self-care to have a successful and well-balanced career. That's number two. 
My final lesson for you is to never underestimate the power of your law degree. And I'm going to echo some of the comments you've already heard. So um, we're among friends, so let's be honest. People love hating on lawyers. And everyone's quick to tell a lawyer joke. In fact, as soon as you walk out of here, people just start telling you lawyer jokes. And the irony is that, and this is real irony, that there's never been a moment in our country's recent history where lawyers have been so critical to our democracy. You've heard people go on, and you've heard it here today, about the rule of law. But our, our, our laws are not self-executing. And many of our fellow citizens have lost trust in the rule of law. They don't even know what it is anymore. The lesson here is that each of you, no matter what your political views, play a vital role in transforming the idea of a rule of law into reality. And you already heard that when the president issued a travel ban in January 2017, it wasn't the airport protest, nor the political pressure, nor pundits discussing it that first stopped the ban. It was a band of lawyers, volunteers in private practice, from the ACLU, and from state and local governments who rushed to court and got an injunction. And that has happened in repeatedly with DACA, the ban on transgender troops. In each instance, lawyers stood up and stood out. Never forget that. Our democracy only works when people, often represented by lawyers, are able to hold our government to account. And it will be up to you to use your powerful and privileged law degrees, which you rightfully earn, to fight for justice, to defend our judges when they're unfairly attacked, and to advocate for the voiceless. And don't always go for the sexy causes. And that's, mis that's a mistake I made young in my career. One of the proudest moments of my career was when I worked with the attorneys in the law department's child welfare unit in an otherwise ordinary case in family court to get a finding that a couple sexually abused their two-year-old daughter. There was no glory or news coverage of that case, nobody sitting in the galleries, but I knew at the end of that hearing that I used my legal skill to do good, not just to do well. And let me end up with a plug, of course. I know you have a lot of options, but please really think, really commit yourself to public interest or government work, especially the greatest place in the world, the Philadelphia Law Department, <laughs> where many other Temple alumni and some people in the audience have gone to make a difference. And you will be happy to know, this is not theoretical, that the person who succeeded me, a city solicitor two months ago, is none other than a proud Temple graduate. So class of 2018, you can clap that, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> So class of 2018, those are my three lessons for you. Be kind, breathe, I'll repeat that again, breathe, and don't forget the power of your law degree. Those three lessons capture for me what it means to be a modern lawyer. It doesn't matter where you work, how much money you make, or how many people like you. If you follow these teachings, you'll be a more human, complete, and effective lawyer, and you'll build a foundation for a long, healthy career that will impact your community and make this law school proud. You have the brains, more courage, and strength to thrive as lawyers. You are no longer Temple Law students. You're all now Temple lawyers. Again, congratulations. I don't even know some of you guys personally, yet I'm so excited for you and proud of you and wish each and every one of you all the luck in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tulante, for that wonderful commencement address, for sharing with us your history and your insightful advice. And I can't help but add that after I grew up in Philadelphia and went out of state to go to college, one of my doormates' favorite activities was making fun of the way I pronounced WADA. <laughs> so now, the moment that you've all been waiting for the conferral of degrees. We're going to be led in the conferral by members of the university's board of trustees and the law school's board of visitors who are here with us today. And so before we get started, I want to take a moment to thank them. I'm going to ask each of them to rise as I state their names and to stay standing for a moment. And I'll add that each of these individuals, we are extremely proud to count as graduates of Temple Law School. University trustees, 
Leonard Barrick and Marina Katz. And Law School Board of Visitors members, including our chair, Leonard Barrick, Marina Katz, Grant Rawdon, and Martin Silverstein. These individuals give of themselves tirelessly and on a volunteer basis to support the university and the law school. We are very grateful and we thank you for it. Thank you. We have two special degree conferral traditions at the law school that I think well reflect our feeling of community. The first is that graduates whose immediate relatives are also alumni of the law school can have their family members present them with their diploma. And the second is that graduates are invited to bring their children with them as they cross the stage. So if you see people crossing the stage who look a little too young, don't worry. For the graduates, one last rule to learn before graduating, and this is one of custom, not law, but you move your tassel from the right side of your border board to the left once you receive your diploma. I will be assisted in conferring our degrees by my wonderful colleagues in the law school's administration, Professor Rob Barto, Assistant Dean Jennifer Brechneider, Professor Laura Little, Professor Jaya Ramji Nogales, Professor Rachel Rebouche, and Assistant Dean Louis Thompson. I would now like to invite Marina Katz, member of the Board of Trustees of Temple University and of our Board of Visitors to confer the Masters of Law degrees. I would also like to call Assistant Dean Louis Thompson to present the candidates. Will the candidates for degrees of Master of Laws for international students, Master of Laws in Transnational Law, and Master of Laws in Trial Advocacy please rise. <laughs> Trustee Katz, I am very pleased to present these candidates who have completed all of the academic requirements and are recommended by the faculty of the School of Law to receive their degrees. Thank you. By the power of the Board of Trustees, I confirm upon you the degree that you have earned with all the rights, honors, and the privilege pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the candidates please follow the faculty marshal to the stage to receive your diplomas? The Master of Laws for International Students. Rafael Antonio Gomez Abraham. <laughs> Atina Afshari. <laughs> Kwame. Asumain Amanpene. <laughs> Chan Ting Ting. <laughs> Shushmita De Barman. Marco Guerra. Emir Farouk Karabaklu. <laughs> 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 
I'm going to ask Irmer to stay on the stage so that he can present the diploma to his brother. Satuk Boro Karaborklu. Mobolaji Olufimi Keyinu. Victor Lachman. <laughs> Kagefumi Mizuguchi. <laughs> Melanie Mueller. Kim Mariska van der Schlaus with her daughter Olivia Grace. Kuno Anton Maximilian von Gajitski. Wen Lai. Ahmed Berke Zamantili. Jauli Da. The Master of Laws in Taxation. Annette C.M. Kalimuzo Drogni. <laughs> Courtney Nicole Richardson. <laughs> the Master of Laws in Trial Advocacy. Christian Jason Bell, accompanied by his sons Caleb and Brody, and his daughter Jace. <laughs> Stephen E. Burke. Daria Bojidarova Janka. <laughs> Michelle Higgins of the class of 09 will be presenting the diploma to her sister, Sarah Modric. Devya Prasad. Jonathan Theron Shelton. I would now like to invite Leonard Barrick, member of the Board of Trustees of Temple University and chair of the Law School's Board of Visitors to confer the degree of Juris Doctor. I would also like to call Assistant Dean Jennifer Brettschneider to present the candidates. Are you ready? 
Will the candidates for the degree Juris Doctor please rise? <laughs> Trustee Barrick, I am very pleased to present these candidates who have completed all of the academic requirements and are recommended by the faculty of the School of Law to receive their Juris Doctor. Good afternoon. By the authority conferred in me by the Board of Trustees of Temple University <clears throat> and the authority of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereupon confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor with all the rights, honors, and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may be seated, and will the candidates please come forward? Michael D. Allert, accompanied by his son, Malachi, and his daughter, Mara. <laughs> Ogo Olu Wakintan. Anu Oluwapo, Akin Wunmi. <laughs> Mansoor Al Hawasi. Thomas Clinton Allgood. Shirlene Dominique Allseed. Clementa Maureen Amazon. <laughs> David J. Armstrong of the Temple Law Class of 1992 will now present the diploma to his son, Christopher D. Armstrong. William George Arsenault. <laughs> Stephen Joseph Augello, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sean Michael Bachman. Joseph Bailey, summa cum laude. <laughs> Joseph Miles Baker, magna cum laude. <laughs> M. 
And now Gerald B. Baldino of the Temple Law Class of 1989 will present the diploma to his son, Gerald Basil Baldino, who graduates cum laude. Srimati Lakshmi Somati Balram, cum laude. Duncan Robert Becker, magna cum laude. Jeffrey Adam Becker, Magna cum laude. Jesse Rose Benavidez, cum laude. Sonia C. Bishop, Magna cum laude. Sean Black. Christopher John Blazosek. Dina Blackman, Magna Cum Laude. Grant P. Bloomdahl. Anne Elizabeth Bonfilio, magna cum laude. Dana J. Bonfilio, magna cum laude. Margaret Rita Borski. Rave A. Boyd, accompanied by her very excited son, Robert. Now, Eleanor Bradley Huet of the Temple Law Class of 14 will present the diploma to her sister, Eileen Margaret Bradley. Thank you. Ariel Yasmin Brown. Lisa C. Burns. Rita M. Burns, magna cum laude. Now Margie M. Callahan of the Temple Law Class of 1988 will present the diploma to her daughter, Allison Bridget Callahan, cum laude. <laughs> Jenna Noel Cantarella. Elizabeth M. Casey, 
magna cum laude. Zagam Hussain Chaudhry. Phil Chi. Alicia R. Clark. <laughs> Christopher Paul Clemson, cum laude. Rosemary T. Cochran, magna cum laude. Now, Stuart L. Cohen of the Temple Law Class of 1977 will present a diploma to his daughter, Rachel A. Cohen. Nicholas Kalura, accompanied by his son Eric, magna cum laude. <laughs> Caroline Quincy Conrad. <laughs> Rachel Nicole Costello. Sarah Elizabeth Crosley with her daughter, Violet. Rebecca Mary Daly, cum laude. Audrey Ellen Davis, cum laude. Diana Renee Davis, accompanied by her sons, Josiah and Hondo. <laughs> Adrian M. Dean II. Joseph D'Angelo of the Temple Law Class of 2009 will now present the diploma to his brother, Terrence Robert D'Angelo. Andrew Peter DeMarco, magna cum laude. Danielle Vleek Der Ohanesian, cum laude. <laughs> Emily Diaz. Mitchell Butler Blake Diesco, magna cum laude. Mariana Diosa Gomez. Christine Anna 
Dobish. Stephen Paul Dodd. Drake Paul Dodson. Molly Everett Dollinger, magna cum laude. Amelia M. Donovan. Leo F. Doyle of the Temple Law, Leo F. Doyle Jr. of the Temple Law Class of 1985 will now present the diploma to his daughter, Margaret Mary Doyle. Kaichi Do. Antonia Michelle Dumas. Osazanarua Osamede Ebose. Come laude. George Constantine Economides. Patrick Egan of the Temple Law Class of 1986 will now present the diploma to his daughter, Ariel Egan. <laughs> Avraham Einhorn, summa cum laude, accompanied by his son Yitzchak and his daughter Mindy. <laughs> Nicholas J. Elia. Brooke J. Elmi, magna cum laude. <laughs> Sen Kyuan Fong. Todd B. Filipovitz. Blake Dalton Fink, summa cum laude. Harrison Fontex. April Vergara Francia. Martin Russell Freeman. Barry Lauren Friedland. And now, Shirley Friedman, class of 1985, will present 
the degree to Ashley Blair Friedman. Jessica Ariel Friedman. Kevin G. Gallagher. Francis Raymond Genus III with daughters Olivia and Mary and son Frankie. Francis is graduating cum laude. Linda George, cum laude. Brandon Michael Glacken. Vasiliki Guliabaris. Gabrielle Chantel Green, cum laude. <laughs> Elliot Imani Griffin. Vincent M. Grasavich III. Danielle Claire Gutierrez. And now Stephen N. Haas, class of 1983 and Nancy Snyder, in that class of 1983, will present the degree to their son, Matthew Carl Haas, summa cum laude. Adam Ryan Hackenberg and son Ted, Daughter, Mary Catherine. <laughs> Brian Matthew Hanratty. <laughs> Matthew Joseph Hoy. Robert H. Hayes. Nicole Lynn Heckman. Kelly L. Hoffman. Michael Hornung. <laughs> Chase A. Howard, cum laude. Matthew Hal, summa cum laude. Imani Hannah Hudson Hill.
Brooke Amber Hutchins. Tracy Leche Johnson. <laughs> Stephen A. Johnston. Havens Jones the fourth <laughs> Ethy H. Josie <laughs> Christopher P. Justin. Spencer Curry, Carr Summa Cum Laude. Antifer Carr. Amir A. Khan. Jared W. Conchinus, magna cum laude. Ronald Adam Cola. Michael Kowalik. Michael Dean Krebs. Robert J. Kumor, magna cum laude. Michael Anthony Lavanga. Richard James Lachette. Hugh Lee. Matthew Frank Liley. Emily Elaine Litka Cum Laude. Who do you have? Regina Ann. Lou Sesson. Stuart Lundy, class of 1979, will deliver the degree to John Robert Lundy. James E. McGuire.
Brandon Richard Maitland. Ksenia Makarova. Meredith Manchester, magna cum laude. Guy Pennypacker Marinari, summa cum laude. Jasmine Sophia Mason. Brandon Philip Matznev, magna cum laude. Gregory Paul Matzmanian, cum laude. Peter Akawi Mazur, cum laude. James L. McCarrick. <laughs> Margaret Raymond McDermott will be presented her degree by her mother, Jan McDermott, class of 1989. John Patrick Mache. Alexander Joseph Menard, cum laude. <laughs> Raul Mendez the <III>. third. <laughs> Peter Mooney, class of nineteen eighty two and Patricia Liotta, class of 1982, will present the degree to their son, Matthew Peter Mooney. Beth Ann Morrison. Matthew Ryan Mortimer. Bridget Mary Murphy. Joseph Isaac John Nazical. M. R. Nestor. Adora Jennifer Nora, magnum cum laude. Catherine Aldiger Osval Osvala will be presented her degree by her brother, Alexander Osvala. <laughs> Kenneth Robert Paulus. Ashley Pakala. <laughs> 
Cynthia Carolina Pereira. Sydney E. H. Pierce, magna cum laude. Justin Michael Pilchman. Mark Lewis Pitts. Emily Elizabeth Ploucha. Matthew James Potter with his son Harvey. Benjamin F. Quintana, cum laude. Melanie Ann Rader. Adam A. Reifman, magna cum laude. John William Ritchie. Melanie Blute Robinson. Victoria C. Rogers, magna cum laude. David A. Rosenfeld. Ashley Quinn Rochford, cum laude. And now, Pennsylvania State Representative John J. Taylor, class of 1984, will present the degree to his daughter, Jillian Patricia Roth, cum laude, with her son, Nolan. And now, Mary Ellen O'Laughlin, class of 1979, will present the degree to her daughter, Veronica Mary Shad. Michael J. Shane. Stephanie Renee Schreck. Benjamin I. Schulman. Elizabeth G. Schultz, cum laude. Natan M. Schwartz. And now, Don Siegel, class of 1984, and Nancy Wasser, class of 1976, will present the degree to their son, Jacob Ross Wasser Siegel, cum laude.
Carly Ann Shanahan, summa cum laude. Jane Lowe Shanko. Kirk Elizabeth Shields. Anthony Michael Serzega, magna cum laude. Max J. Silverberg. And now, Ambassador Martin J. Silverstein, class of 1979, will present the degree to his son, Douglas M. Silverstein. <laughs> Christina M. Snyder. Maria Solomidu. <laughs> Brianna Joelle Summers, cum laude, with her daughter, Alana. <laughs> Kevin M. Souffrant. Maria Zambrano Steinhaus, cum laude. Andrew Hart Stokort. Reginald Lamar Streeter with his son, Reagan Reginald, and daughter, Carlisle Annalise. Francis Shannon Sweeney. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Sweeney. <laughs> Casey Elizabeth Swiskey. Adita Sipian. And now, Mary Gone Fakre, class of 1986, will present the degree to her daughter, Catherine Frances Thackeray, magna cum laude. Brian Thomas. Liam James Thomas. <laughs> Kevin Thomas Totoro. <laughs> Congratulations. Kevin.
Kevin Trainer, cum laude. Maria, Maria Talkovic. Andrew Vincent Valentin. Samuel M. Ventresca, magna cum laude. Sarah Grace Victor. And now, George Vinci, class of 1988, will present the degree to his daughter, Brianna Marie Vinci, magna cum laude. And now, Jonathan T. Warren, class of 1981, will present the degree to his son, Andrew Clifford Warren. <laughs> Ilana Weinblatt. Roxana West, cum laude. Alejandra Joy Whitney Smith. Tanisha Amanda Williams. Cody Melissa Walpert, magna cum laude. <laughs> Jessica Elizabeth Wood. Dan Yarnall, cum laude. James E. Yoakum, cum laude, with his daughter, Georgia. In a few seconds, Dean Mandel will come up to give his closing remarks. But before then, we ask that parents, friends, relatives get your cameras out and that the graduates rise and toss your caps on the count of three and receive our applause. One, two, three. I hope that everyone will give me just one or two more minutes. First, I would like to ask you to join me in thanking the many people who played important roles in our ceremony today. The law school's exceptional, exceptional administration and staff who spent countless hours to arrange and run today's beautiful graduation ceremony our marshals and our ushers, our sign language interpreters, Charity Johnson and Kelly McQuillan, 
and the Gabrielli Brass Concert Band. Thank you all. Would the Temple University Beasley School Law Class of 2018 please rise? Let us all give one more round of applause to these wonderful graduates. I now pronounce Temple Law School's 118th commencement in recess. As we recess, I ask that you remain in your seats until the stage party exits. Thank you and congratulations, graduates.